Talk Movie Talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today, Director of Development, oh. Christian Harloff. Didn't ask you to say that. How's it going? Nice to see everybody. Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. A lot of fun today. Started with a big, huge debate before the show started, uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Can we bring it up again? No. Also here, John Schnapp. <laughs> action comedy or is it just a comedy hey what's up everyone how's it going it's wednesday it's mark riley's birthday wish him a happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah. Hey, riley around yeah. thank you all for giving me such a great birthday uh buzz on monday See you later. Aww, also here mark ellis happy hump day everybody guess what if you're an action comedy you can be both a comedy and an action movie everybody wins where's the confetti yeah <laughs> makes no sense i like eddie murphy so everything he's in is a comedy oh my gosh hang here on a go. second we're not getting back to that are we <laughs> oh all right what's gosh. up first According to a report from THR, DC and Warner Brothers are shaking things up for their film division, appointing John Berg and Jeff Johns to co-run DC Films in an attempt to course correct their comic book universe and create a dedicated division for their films. The move is part of a border refinement of executive roles at Warner Brothers, which has suffered since its disappointing debut of Batman vs. Superman. Instead of a range of movies to oversee, executives will be, char will be charged with managing genre stems while reporting to Warner Brothers Pictures president Greg Silverman. Cor Courtney Valenti will now oversee all Lego movie projects as well as the Harry Potter line that begins with Fantastic Beasts. Senior production execs Jesse Ehrman and Nigel Kuya Kendall will focus on comedy family and sci-fi action with Johns and Berg on their superhero lineup. Johns will still report to DC Entertainment president Diane Nelson and Berg will report to Silverman. The move is mentioned by THR as an attempt to unify the elements of the DC movies in order to emulate the way Marvel Studios has produced its films under the leadership of President Kevin Feige. <coughs> Sources also say Warners is still wanting to remain filmmaker driven. As part of their new jobs, Berg and Johns will become producers on the Justice League movies. Christian, what do you think of the shakeup happening over at DC Films and Warner Brothers? Confusing. Um, because the I'm sure we're going to hear on both sides here, but I think part of it is why tell us this now? Hasn't this kind of been the way that it's been working? Has this not? Is this is this brand new? Are they letting it out because of all the reports that people know that it's a mess, and whether or not they want to put they, they let people know that it's not rumor anymore that they are making some changes to the way things are run over there that they do want to say, hey, look, everyone's saying, why don't they get a Kevin Feige like guy? Here's our Kevin Feige like guy. Are they doing it that way? Has it already been in place? I like the idea. Personally, as an optimist, I like the idea that Silverman, who runs Warner Brothers, is saying, okay, you guys had this division, you guys had that division, and now we're going to put our emphasis with a dude who obviously knows the comic books, and we're going to focus on DC with not too many cooks in the kitchen, one guy kind of making the moves. I'm hoping that's the case. I don't feel it ultimately is the case, but it's just weird because now they're also saying to everyone out there, because even if you are a... DC fanatic and the first guy to go no you're not allowed to say that even you have to say hmm things are happening there they're not happy with what's been going on so they're making some changes the question is are the changes things that have already been in place or are they things that are going to help the greater good Schnepp what do you think uh, well, I mean, hearing it officially announced is kind of cool it just feels very cosmetic and it feels like nothing they didn't make any new hires these are all people who've been working there for years all in the same capacity for years doing the same thing reporting to the same people so i don't really understand like what is the big news really right. other than just you know saying um well this guy who used to report to greg silverman and jeff johns who used to report to diane nelson are still going to report to greg silverman and diane nelson and they're still doing the same thing that they were doing only that now they're like co-producers so i guess that's the kind of the big news instead of announcing everybody and all their different things that they're all working on have been working on for years now it doesn't feel like news to me it just feels like we're making sure that you know that these two guys are co-producers of these dc films so i guess if that's the official news at least it's uh pleasant it's not like shocking to me but i think jeff johns is a smart guy he's the guy who helped put the dc universe on the map as far as the television world so maybe giving him a little bit more control over the film world will help in the future films to come so don't you what about let's let's go past the johns thing for a second and let's go to 
what he actually did with the rest of the division too because if it was because i worked at warner brothers for a while mm -hmm. and the way that it was was a lot of these executives and Cor courtney valente and all those people were actually there when i was there and they all had a lot of projects that they would be dealing with watching the de development i thought it was really interesting for a president to say you know what let's go genre specific you're going to work on these genres you're going to work on these genres those are your strengths mm -hmm. Good move there, and if that if that is if that is new, then I think that's very interesting. And then you put the emphasis on more strengths to these people who know the the superhero genre. But who's in charge of action comedy at Warner Brothers? Oh, you're just this waiting. Is you're just waiting for it. I, uh, <laughs> what the point of the story? Come on. The, the point of the comedy. story. The big thing that I read into this is I totally agree. This is just lip service. This is just like, oh, okay, now you have an official title. Now fans know who to blame. If you don't like a Warner Brothers comedy, you know who to write your hate mail to. The big thing I see in this is that they still want to remain fi uh, filmmaker driven. Warner Brothers wants to remain filmmaker driven right. where we have heard from this company that, hey guys, it's really hard to go after just the huge blockbusters and then do independent films. So we were worried that the middle class is going to be cut out. Maybe this is a ray of hope that they're still going to focus on some of those kind of movies that aren't just either giant blockbusters or tiny independent films that they acquire, that they still want to make original feeling content. That's what I read into this. I mean, everything else just seems like, oh, hey, the, the job you've been doing here for however long, now it has a different title and we're good to go. Do, well, what is, does that mean, like, that when they say that, because that's like a very boastful kind of thing to say, was their money going to be where their mouth is? Let's be filmmaker-driven. So does that mean they're going to let David Ayers make what he wants with Suicide Squad? Is that what I'm reading into it? Or is, is it something like... What well, else the are, report the report in there was that that it was they, they did those reshoots. This is also, and I think there's also kind of rumblings that maybe they're trying to take the direction, the the focus off of people talking about it behind the scenes and let them do their their reshoots and their edits and mm -hmm. and really maybe clean it up to where it's like okay now we're ready to present this thing, because now that they're making this announcement all eyes are going to be directly aimed at Suicide Squad, like mm -hmm. right away. Like, and they can't say, even if like, if it's great, are they going to say, well, that's what the new team did? Or the, or if it's not good, are they going to say, well, that's before the team was in place? <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. I mean, what? it's like the, the whole thing with this is that you want to, you want to make fans impressed with it. Oh, okay, now you're doing this and you're doing this and we have a nice orderly structure to this, whereas everybody thought it was chaos before. I never thought it was chaos. I just feel like maybe they didn't have as specific of a job title, but it seems like everybody who's working Working there knows what movies they're focused on so it just seems like a different way to categorize it and the filmmaker driven thing it's something that i hope is true i have no evidence to the you do contrary have to no you see. do have you do have evidence because, from what from flash when they got rid of the first time director they got rid of that first time director in flash graham smith yeah they got rid of him and then because i think they want because of that exact reason that they want to go after the bigger filmmakers certainly i mean especially when you're getting Let's go with Marvel, what they're doing for Black Panther. You have Ryan Coogler, who just had those two big movies back to back, you know, a critical darling and then a successful movie and, and a good movie in Creed to where then they pick him up and they've been going after that talent. Well, I think that's Thor, Kenneth Branagh. They've always been getting that's what, talent. Yeah, right. And I think that's, that's the, what that's DC wants goal. to do now. Well, and it's like, but, but are they actually going to do that? Well, why do you is... get rid of that guy if not? I mean, if you want, because I think the, I think that, that Silverman and everyone over there is they want, they, they don't want, they don't want to trust that property right now for for whether it's not right or wrong in a first time director they want to go after i think they should go after some more top tier directing talent it certainly seems like that's what they're doing oh sure but it just goes back to Steph's point where it's like but are you actually going to let these filmmakers make their right, movie i mean right. filmmaker driven isn't just the talent you're getting it's actually letting them make the movie that they right. want to make and even by Zack snyder's admission i mean look the guy wanted to make an over three hour batman v superman movie but it seems clear that his vision was not realized in the theatrical cut of that yeah. so i'm so I'm curious though too because here, here's the thing because we've and I don't want to open up a can of worms here but this is where the conversation kind too of comes late. in with fans. It, it is up. but like so that you get a comment here from this guy Films of Fury who says there is no fallout WB is doing just fine BVS was excellent to you maybe that's the case and you are entitled to your opinion <clears throat> certainly whether or not you agree with critics or you agree with half of the fan base or you agree with this shuffle or not something is happening something is someone is aware that something is happening so meetings were hold you mm. can't be a blind fan and go i want it to be right. amazing just the way i want it to be and i loved it so everyone else has to feel my way that's not how it works there is a fallout now hopefully that this particular fallout will make us all collectively as fans go nice good move good for now now jeff johns and they're making the moves that's why i applaud this whether or not it happened six months ago or 10 
today. It is. It's something that they are not happy with. The Warner Brothers people, whether or not you love the movie or not, the people at Warner Brothers were not happy with the results. There was reports about that. There was detailed reports. So let's just, everyone, let's not be great. I want, I was rooting for them. They're not. All right, Ashley, what's next? <laughs> Sony Pictures has released the newest Ghostbusters trailer for director Paul Feig's upcoming reboot. The redo stars Melissa McCarthy, Kate McKinnon, Kristen Wiig, and Leslie Jones as a team of women who band together in order to fend off paranormal activity in New York City, becoming the city's only hope when a slew of ghosts descend upon the Big Apple. The film also stars Chris Hemsworth, Cicely Strong, Andy Garcia, and Michael K. Williams. Ghostbusters opens in theaters on July 15th. Schnapp, what do you think of the new trailer for Ghostbusters. To be honest with you, I actually, I like this trailer, but once again, it felt a little weird, but I think a lot of Paul Feig's uh, trailers don't come, you know, they don't work as trailers. You see the film and they work. Bridesmaids is a good example. Um, so I'm still holding out to see the actual film. I mean, look, you have four incredibly funny ladies. You have an incredibly talented director and these trailers are just not doing it. And uh, this trailer for me was definitely it showed signs of what the problems in our current way the trailers are cut, where it's like, add this music, then cut to a goofy graphic, then have someone say something that's funny out of context. So when you have a, a movie that works on scenes that are in context and you cut them all out of context and show a bunch of like, you know, weird shots together, you don't ever get a flavor of what the, the movie actually could be. So I'm gonna have just have to hold out I can't say I love this trailer. I didn't hate it, but I'm still looking forward to seeing the movie because I think there's a film that's really funny in there eventually when we see it. So it's like, <laughs> that's what I got to say. Uh, yeah, look, this is a much better trailer than the first one. But that being said, I still think it looks like a bad movie. Um, I just, I, and I'm, I'm rooting for, for Paul Feig. I'm rooting for these girls. I want this to be good. I'm hoping that everything that I've seen so far, that it's just, it's just kind of a misleading trailer that I go in there and I was like, wow, well, where was that movie in the trailers? That wasn't there. Oh, I'm so glad that this is the movie that came out. I just don't have the high hopes that that's the way I'm going to be feeling because I, it, to me in this trailer and every trailer I've seen, even though this was a much better trailer, I just feel like these people, like everyone involved is just playing dress up and they're just like pretending like, oh, let's make a Ghostbusters movie. It doesn't feel like the actual like Ghostbusters and the scene in the concert is this a Ghostbusters movie? Is it a Bill and Ted's movie? And then the ghost, the ghost is on Leslie Jones's shoulder and then people are taking selfies with the, it's like, no, I, I, it just, it just lost me. There wasn't anything particularly funny in this trailer. So even though it was a well, a much better trailer as far as telling us what the story is and and showing us a little bit more and consistent tone i just don't care about this movie anymore you're telling me you would not try to facebook live if you saw a ghost at a concert you're telling me if i was a, a, if i was a, a while not if i was next to the thing if i was a, in the balcony like waldorf and Star, <laughs> Stanley, the two of us yeah sure why not but but right there i don't yeah. want my, I, I mean, my if I'm face right there i might try to sneak a selfie but it was just that one concert over those two idiots doing it yeah. when you had a group of people so like i felt the same way about this trailer than i did the previous trailer which is like look i want to love this movie it didn't necessarily do it for me comedically and that's the bummer because i think ghostbusters is one of the funniest movies ever made and so with this i it's want an action to comic. laugh i want to laugh at these things ghostbusters is not an action comedy. Oh my God. ghostbusters, I'm ghostbusters is a comedy yes, with elements of action yes, and horror it in it and this one seems like at least in this trailer they focused on showing us all these scary beings that are going to be coming to life and this team that has to go against it then every time they tried to do a joke it just didn't land there were a few yeah. times Times that I chuckled watching it. Dennis and I have a uh, trailer reaction. It's going to be going up soon on the channel. And I, the comedy is what scares me in this movie now. Mm -hmm. And I go back to what Schnapp said, where he's like, look, it's hard to put the funniest moments in a movie into the trailer sometimes, which I'm happy about. Like, I want to go into this movie and see things I didn't see in the trailer and be like, oh, that's really funny. That's really good. But I'm just thinking like, man, you you have all this great material, hopefully, in the movie. Why can't we get more of that feel in the trailer? I yeah. do think that like I buy them as a team together. It's like a team that is like, you know, they don't always agree with, with, with each other. They come from very different worlds, but they are thrown together because they do believe in this cause, whereas everybody else is kind of questioning them and putting them out on the side. So I like that element of it, and I got that from the trailer. Just didn't laugh that yeah. much. Let me say this. I think a, a selling point for the 
certain films is when you show the first four minutes or a five minute clip where you actually are allowed to be in the scene with everyone and then you get the flavor why it's either a good film or it's action or it's comedy because then you get the setting and the tone. Trailers are usually not able to do that. Think about all the biggest and best action film trailers. You just see dudes running and shooting and explosions. You're like, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Or comedy films that have ruined every single joke. And then you see the movie and you're like, nothing is left that's funny. I've seen all the big moments in there in the trailers. I don't think this film, the trailers for this film, have, you've seen that yet, just because of the way the film is constructed. Right. So I think that's probably, you know, if anyone out there from Sony is listening, maybe release the first five minutes or a five minute clip of the movie so that fans can actually get used to the, all these characters, how they interact, and then it'll feel funny. Unless they're not confident enough to do that. Hey, we'll see. Yeah, but I yeah. say that's the, the challenge. I yeah. mean, something like Nice Guys is a movie that I really enjoyed, but I saw a lot of the comedic bits in that movie in the trailer mm. and so i knew a lot of that stuff was coming whereas i would have preferred that movie hold back now those trailers did do a great job of selling the nice guys so i think the trailers were fantastic and i ended up liking the movie but i did know a lot of the comedy going in so maybe ghostbusters they're trying to surprise you that's what i'm hoping for i'm just not as confident that it's going to be funny as i used to be all right what's next Marvel's Black Panther movie is quickly becoming one of the most talked about adaptations to date with Chadwick Boseman's scene-stealing performance in Captain America Civil War, along with casting confirmations that Michael B. Jordan and Lupita Nyong'o will be joining the cast. Now, director Ryan Coogler is adding to the hype, telling Fast Company in an interview that Black Panther will be his most personal film to date. On directing the movie for Marvel, Coogler said... It's a specific challenge, what Marvel's doing and what you see a lot of studios doing now that Marvel has done it so successfully is making content that exists in a particular universe where the characters tie in and cross over. And I think that's a great creative challenge to me to make this movie as personal as possible. It's going to be my most personal movie to date, which is crazy to say, but it's completely the case. I'm obsessed with this character and this story right now, and I think it's going to be very unique and still fit into the overall narrative that they're establishing. With Coogler as passionate and obsessed with the Black Panther movie as the fans are, it looks like audiences will be in for a real treat when Black Panther hits theaters on February 16, 2018. Mark, what do you think about Ryan Coogler's comments about Black Panther? I think they're great, Ashley. Long Ryan Cougar has been a fan of Black Panther. If you read the comics since they first started being released, or he just now that he's the director has ingratiated himself in this world. But to hear a guy who made a movie like Fruitvale Station and a movie like Creed say this is the most personal one to date, I'm sure it's a little bit lip service. I'm sure it's like, no, I really care about this particular story because it's the current one he's working on. But it seems like as he has immersed himself more and more into this world, that he's getting a lot of rich material out of it. So that's what I want to hear from a director who I do have a lot of confidence in is going to make a great movie. Yeah, I, I don't think it's lip service, though. I, I love his comments, but the reason why I'd say it's not lip service is because of the passion this guy does have and how important this movie is, not just in telling the Marvel story, but you look at all the African-American characters that they or, or actors that they put in here, this is a very strong, it's like the first lead, I think, a superhero lead that an African-American mm -hmm. will have and an African-American is directing. This is a very personal story to, to him, you see, and I, as far as whether or not he's going to learn, if, 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 he was, if he learned this material 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or a year ago, I still believe that he is so obsessed with the character because that's the type of director he is. I love Creed. I love Fruitvale Station. He's one of my favorites out there right now. And I had the pleasure of being able to talk to this dude a couple times. And it's real. Mm -hmm. It's not like, it's not some guy going, oh, yeah, you know, I could. No, no, no. He is in it. He is a passionate dude. If he, what I believe his words when he's saying, you know, he's going to make this happen, you're going to get a special movie with this and I totally believe that it's personal it's interesting that he would say that because all of his movies have been personal to him whether it be Fruitvale Station and then carrying over to Creed to where he used to watch Rocky with his dad all the time and that movie being able to pitch that movie to Stallone get it made and now he is the first uh, African American I believe so right to, to direct a Marvel movie right well yeah I mean but uh, I think bigger than that is it's the first African American character right comic book right. character Ever. It was issue 52 of the Fantastic Four in the 60s where they introduced Black Panther, the very first black superhero. 
And I think that uh, runs really deep for a lot of people. I love the Black Panther growing up as a kid. I think the character himself is a very strong character. He's obviously the king of his own country, as well as being like yeah. an incredible badass superhero. So um, I have an affinity for the Jack Kirby super cosmic Black Panthers, if you've got to check them out. But there's also incredible current runs that are going on right now in your comic book store that you be, should be checking out involving the Black Panther. So Ryan Coogler adding his own flavor to it, his own personal, probably what like he's doing is like when he says it's personal to him, he's using some elements of when he was a kid reading Black Panther that made him, that personally impacted him, and now he's able to share that with all of us. So that's how I read it. Yeah, and to correct myself too, I was talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Obviously there was Blade and there was Spawn as well too, but I meant in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this is the first, and as far since the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the popularity of the superhero movie, we have not had the strong African-American superhero yet. Yes, Blade. Yes, Spawn, but I mean, those were a long time ago and it was a different culture. Back oh, well, you didn't love Spawn? Come on. Great movie. Michael Jai yep. White, hell yes. Yeah. This movie, I think that it's, it, when he says a personal movie, he's not talking about like running around in tights like like the, he used to do that, but I think that it's the themes involved with Black Panther, mm -hmm. and maybe it's because, you know, whether the stuff that he went through in Civil War, or we get more of a backstory as to how this character has come to life and through multiple generations, I think that he really cares about this stuff regardless when he first started investigating it he clearly has a passion for this guy now all right now before we go to buy or sell the lovely wendy lee is reading your comments in the chat room she's banning the ball bag she's taking <laughs> the comments from the good ones <laughs> Wendy, what are they saying? All right, let's go all the way back up to the uh, WD, WBDC shakeup. Some are saying that it's great news. Others are a little bit more lukewarm to this, though a few are saying that Snyder shouldn't be getting all the hate that he's getting. Launchpad 4 says, Jeff Johns has only produced Green Lantern. Let that sink in. Brittany Bailey says they're scrambling. And Sherlock Who says DC should just slow down. There is no need to catch up to Marvel. Take your time to tell your epic stories. Don't rush them. And for the blockbuster trailer, as you probably can tell, everybody is pretty much selling it. But they're saying that it is a little bit better than the first one. Uh, Redlock Live says at least they didn't lie about it being a sequel this time around. And Just Joe says the original Ghostbuster is an adventure movie with comedy. Thank you. And for the Black Panther, <laughs> a comedy. lot of buys for Black Panther, a lot of excitement for the film, and some are surprised that this is more personal to Coogler than Fruit Valsation. All right. Okay, now it is time for buy or sell. Ashley's going to read out some more of the world of movies, the stories, what are going down, and myself, Mark, and Schnapp will either buy or sell it. Ashley, what's first? THR is reporting that Steven Spielberg is reteaming with Jurassic World filmmaker Colin Trevorrow for Powerhouse, a family action movie that will also have Simon Kinberg on as a producer. Indie filmmaker Emily Carmichael will write and direct the project for Amblin Entertainment, with plot details being kept under wraps. Director Carmichael snagged the gig after her short film, The Hunter and the Swan Discuss Their Meeting, won the Grand Jury Prize at the 2012 Science Fiction Fantasy Short Film Festival, which led to an invite to the set of Trevorrow's latest movie, The Book of Henry. During the visit, Carmichael and Trevorrow developed the characters and world of Powerhouse. Carmichael is also one of the names rumored to be on the shortlist of directors for Captain Marvel, so there is no telling what, is, what this new project might mean for her chances on the Marvel movie. Powerhouse has yet to secure a release date. Christian Byersell, Colin Trevorrow, and Emily Carmichael teaming with Spielberg. <laughs> Buy it. I will <laughs> buy it because we. It's it. Look what Spielberg does. Spielberg associates himself with talent. He's been working with Trevorrow on Jurassic World. Uh, he worked with him on Jurassic World, and to see that they're going to kind of go and do some more stuff together. Yeah, why wouldn't I want to see these two guys team up? He takes these proteges. He works with them, and to go to the Spielberg school this this project sounds really interesting to me so I'm gonna buy it Mark yeah I mean it's hard to buy it without knowing what the hell it is but uh yeah I mean I like the names involved yeah, so it's right. a really easy answer for me it's like yeah it's, it's a buy you got Colin Trevari got Steven Spielberg they usually Spielberg knows who to work with right. generally I know nothing about this but the name powerhouse is like a cool name to say so I'll buy it on that as well Yep. I buy it because, you know, the guy who wrote it's like won a, won a little science fiction short award. Then him and Trevorrow like came up with the world and characters, which sort of 
intimates that it's not on Earth or it's a science fiction type story. Ooh. So I'm just going to read into that and buy it with that flavor. All right. <laughs> What's next? According to a report from Deadline, a Tetris movie is in the works with the project being planned as an 80 million China U.S. co production under Threshold Global Studios. The plan is to film in China and other locations in 2017, with Chinese cast members featured in the ensemble. Deadline also reports that the movie is billed as a sci fi thriller, with the first film seen as part of a trilogy. Threshold producer Larry Kazanoff told Deadline, the movie is not at all what you think. It will be a cool surprise. An official release date has yet to be announced. Schnapp Virus sell a Tetris movie trilogy. You know what's a cool surprise? If there's three of them. They haven't even made the first one yet. <laughs> They're announcing a goddamn trilogy of Tetris, which is a video game made up of shapes that you move and form. <laughs> Give me a break. This is so stupid. I don't even like talking about it, but it just it makes me sick to hear that they've... Oh, wait till you see the cool surprise about Tetris... The movie trilogy. Suck it, man. I don't care about your cool surprise, okay? What is it? Oh, we've got to save the world from aliens, so we train these dudes to create a Tetris wall around Earth. Ooh, I'm shocked and amazed at your incredible science fiction trilogy. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing I got to add. It's like, you know what? A lot of other people are constantly talking about like oh well what about lego that surprised everybody it didn't surprise that many people because lego has got an entire universe around it there's like little lego characters based on all different products in fact you could probably have a tetris lego set suck on that <laughs> tetris is a bunch of shapes give me a break <laughs> mark yes. <laughs> Uh, I, as the world's greatest Tetris player of all time, that's not like some sort of joke, like, oh man, I'm really good at Tetris. I picked it up a couple of times. I am the best uh, player of Tetris in history. I go with Game Boy, and I'm willing to take on anybody in the entire world. Ep, so ep, ep, ep. I challenge you, Mark Whoa. Ellis, to a game of Tetris. You want to play Game Boy Tetris can with I, me? Can I, I Facebook Tetris live here. stream it? Yes, you can. Oh, right. my God. This thing is going to be... I'm looking for the picture right now on my Facebook page of a nice little score I've put together. Mm. If I get to perform my Tetris skills at the premiere, I still probably wouldn't buy this. Like, I love Tetris to death. I have no idea. You got to sell me on how you're going to make this like a real movie. Now, I will say this. If people want to crowd into a theater and watch me play Tetris, that would be one of the most <laughs> rewarding, mind-blowing experiences you can possibly have. I hope you go see it at AMC Prime. I hope you IMAX it. You I 3D want the Ellis it. Trilogy. Because the I am worth a trilogy. I'll do A-type, B-type, and C-type music. That's how we'll get the people in. Time after time after time. Christian, I love the idea. I'm going to still sell it. I'll buy it. Ah. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Not because I think it's going to be good, and I don't think it's ridiculous because it is. Um, but because of hearing you go bananas, I <laughs> want it to be a trilogy, and I want it to be great. To be like, damn it, I like the freaking Tetris movie. It'll never happen. <laughs> uh, even if it was a good movie, it's gonna suck. I mean, There's no way it can be good. You're probably right. But the re like the the idea of them trying to take this property and build shit around Earth and say, all right, you know what, we're gonna protect it from God knows who. Okay, is it ridiculous? Is it idiotic? Are they grasping at straws to try to figure out how to make this property into Yes, should it be a trilogy? Absolutely not. The only reason is because I'm hoping, because it's a sci-fi movie, that we might get a, 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 a holy crap moment out of it. But yes, I understand everything you're saying. So you're, I agree with you. So you're buying it. I'm buying Dude, it. Dude, I want you. To, I want you guys to both like it. I want you guys to both like the movie because I, you're both. I love the idea, <laughs> but yeah. I'm so selling it it's, because you need to sell me on this before it's, I just it's, blindly it's, buy it's, it. It's, ins it's insanely stupid. Well, it's like an beyond, hour into the movie, yeah. guys, what's that? It's the long piece. Yeah. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so, yeah, right. You can't even buy a Tetris movie. The second you buy it, the fans like, you shave your. Go ahead and go to sleep because there's no way it can be good. There's no way. Oh, look, I found a, I found a little picture. I actually checked out that score. Yeah. Um, Get y'all hot and bothered. Whoa, yeah. easy. Candy. I'm still stuck on the fact that you said that there was different Tetris songs. I thought there was yeah. only one. A type, B type, and C type. Can you sing the other ones? Right? Uh, B type's my favorite one. Dun, on. dun, 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 what? Dun, 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 d
All right. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? <laughs> Garbage. Speaking exclusively to Crave God, Online good. about his latest movie, The Nice Guys, director Shane Black fielded questions about his latest with talk with talk turning naturally to his next big budget movie, The Predator. Answering questions about the movie, Shane Black surprisingly went into a lot of detail on what we can expect from the next movie. When asked about continuity and the timeline the new movie will exist in, Black responded, well, all I can really say is it's set present day, so that kind of lets out the one where they travel to other world worlds. I think that was the Robert Rodriguez one. We can maybe do some pre-lapping, but it's set in 2018. When asked whether or not Arnold will make an appearance, Black said, now it's 25 years later, so in other worlds, words, if Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it, which I'm not allowed to discuss, he would be old Arnold. The Predator is set for release on March 2nd, 2018. Mark Byersell, Arnold, actually in The Predator as Black teases. Uh, yeah, I am so locked into this guy doing a Predator movie. And come on, you can't say whether Arnold's in it or not. That means that old Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to be in the movie. Yeah. He's going to finally put down Mobile Strike, and he's going to pick up a gun. <laughs> he's going to teach people how to kill Predators, because if it bleeds, we can kill it. Christian, I know you're buying this as well. I'm absolutely buying it. Wee. And listen, Arnold's in this movie. 100% Arnold's in this movie. Uh, not 90%, 100% yeah. he's in it. We've, we've heard from behind they the scenes. They met. They've already hung they, out. Of course they lunch. have. He just he's, he's teasing it, and now he's pretty much confirming it without confirming it. Yes, you have to have Dutch in this movie, man. We were, we've been waiting for Dutch to come back since uh, Gary Busey was in the second one. And that's the really fact that you have <laughs> him coming back and you just kind of retcon all this other crap that's been out there since the first one. The first one is one of the best action movies, uh, action thrillers mm -hmm. maybe of, of all time. Oh, it's an action thriller. It's an action thriller. Okay. But it's, it, it is a it, – it, to have him back, and I'm wondering who they're going to have as the lead, whether there's some rumors that maybe mm. it'll be The Rock, maybe it'll be you know whoever else, <laughs> Ooh, right? Yeah. That, so who – like I would love to see it, and you can imagine we've been waiting for a kind of this kind of tone of a team up between Arnold and The Rock to have Dutch kind of train. This is how you kill it. This is how you do it. You have yeah. the whole team, and he's just <laughs> and he sits down and he's just like you can't just run around. Put the mud on your face. Go up, <laughs> hold, hold up the torch, scream at the top of your lungs. Just do it. Get into it. He's he's there for sport. Um, <laughs> they, he could be running a camp for kids, like they yes, learn right. how to kill like little tiny predators. Yeah, you got it. You got to have him in there. So Schnapp, buy yourself. Oh, giant buy. Yeah. You know, I mean. I mean, we all saw Predators and we got lied to with the multiple lasers at the very, you know, in the trailer. And there's only like two in the real film. But, you know, it was still a fun, a fun sequel, kind of. It wasn't what we wanted. At least it wasn't what I wanted. But this is exactly what I want. I want Shane Black on Predator 2 or whatever they're going to call it. And hearing that Arnold's back is is excellent. Even if it is just that cameo where they we've got someone who I think can help us with this situation. Helicopter lands, door opens, it's older Arnold playing Dutch. He's there to like tell them his experience, yeah. share his experience on how to take these predators out. So I 100% buy it. I, look, I might no. be the minority. I really like Predators, too. I thought it set up a cool new universe yeah, it was fun. that you could have more adventures in. Now, I'm not saying you need to do it in that world or that mm -hmm. galaxy, but I did like that they were like the, these prisoners and they just get thrown to this new planet where a lot of prey. We know the Predators live somewhere. Whether they live there or they just go there to hunt for sport, you know, I, I, I thought that was a cool thing you could have done more with. And you don't necessarily need to reference that lore, but you also right. don't need to just like completely retcon it either to make this movie. It doesn't sound well, like Well, he didn't say he was going to retcon it. He's just saying, well, that took place in a different time. Yeah. I think he's going to incorporate all... I, I, I bet Shane is even going to incorporate some of the, the alien predator activity as well because they did have in the predator ship they had the alien skull and things well like that, so. yeah but you can you can get rid of those movies and then and then set up a new franchise yeah, I where we could possibly have more aliens i think they're predators. going to and they're gonna go they're, they're gonna try because remember shane black also i think believe co-wrote or maybe wrote the entire script for the first predator mm -hmm. and was in it yeah um so to have him back in this franchise he knows what it is he knows what made the first one great mm -hmm. so i think we're gonna pretty much continue the mythology of the 1987 movie and to have everyone back is amazing and then it's too bad that we're not gonna be able to do dylan all right uh <laughs> is that the last one yes sir. okay last one so wendy what were they saying about the buy or sell topics well let's kick this off with tetris uh you guys the chat room buys it 
No, what? totally. No way. <laughs> no, totally. I, was, I, I, I was an oh, enemy what? for bringing that up. Yeah. <laughs> totally trolling, you guys. All right, Joe I says, there's so many properties and they want to make Tetris. Mark Hansen says, Dwayne The Rock Johnson stars in Tetris Unbound. Don't flip this guy's block. <laughs> nice. um, <laughs> for Predator, there's a lot of buys. Some are selling, but the chat would love it if Arnold made an appearance in the movie. And Theo Michelle says, I'm not a fan of the Predator movies, but I am looking forward to this one because of the director. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you for the buy or sell. Now it's time for AMC Rewind. That's right. It's Rewind brought to you by AMC Theaters, and we are going to go back into the past. What opened up 10 years ago? What opened up 20 years ago? Ashley, what opened up 10 and 20 years ago? 10 years ago, The Da Vinci Code and Over the Hedge, and then 20 years ago, Mission Impossible and Spy Hard. Interesting. All over the board, interesting, starting with 10 years ago to where we had the Da Vinci Code because I remember when the f that this movie came out mm -hmm. that there was so much hype on it because the book was such a phenomenon, you know? Right. And, and then obviously when you get a Ron Howard and a Tom, Tom Hanks involved, it, it was a big event. It was a big movie. And I think it let some people down. I thought it was fine. It let some people down because it didn't maybe translate the same way they wanted it to from the book. But it's still, there's a third one coming out now and it's, it's, it's a franchise. So there you go. And then Over the Hedge with Bruce Willis and the, the late, great Gary Shaling. But that movie is not good at all it's really bad then you should go back 20 years interesting i never knew this you know when riley and i were talking about this the what opened 20 years ago not only did mission impossible come out but then they put spy hard right next to a strategic Smart move, move. Uh, i don't think it really helped it but Not still right. and then mission Impossible. it's kind of a big date now when you think of all the great movies that we've had at least the last three um or mission impossible movies it's it started an era so it's amazing Schnapp. 20 years ago yeah that's fantastic i mean the, and you know the craziest thing is the Mission Impossible movies have only gotten better. Like every single one, like the fifth one, I liked a little bit more than the fourth one, which I thought was fantastic. So, I mean, but you know, you can't forget by honoring the first one, which is directed by Brian De Palma, and I thought it was a great film. Right, it was. It's just amazing to think that it's been 20 years. It's, it's hard to even imagine that. And the Da Vinci Code was 10 years ago, and that's even more forgettable than the, the 20 years ago of Mission Impossible. Right. The only thing I remember from the Da Vinci Code is a weird albino monk who's like torturing himself. And that reminded me of the Chevy Chase film uh, with Goldie Hawn, Foul Play. Oh, and right. also had a creepy play. albino in it. Sure. So I think that you got to lay off albinos. They're just people. So stop making them villains. Mark, what stands out to you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, you know what? If you're going to give Tom Cruise an anniversary cake, you don't give him one for Mission Impossible. You give him one for 30 years ago this week for Top Gun, baby. Oh, yeah. Top Gun yeah. came out 30 years ago this week. Oh, and the Blu-ray's out now, too. Yeah. That's right. Blu-ray. We, uh, we yeah. have a little giveaway, don't we? Oh, we did point? that already. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Well, I hope you enjoy Top Gun. I'm living a Tom Cruise shirt right now. Living oh. it. I'm living it. I didn't read Da Vinci Code. Next question. All right. So All you now, need is Q. Well, well, there you go. So that's what came out 10 and 20 years ago. Now it's time as we get into mailbag. Before we do that, actually, I want you guys to go over to Twitter at Collider Video and make sure that you submit some questions. Ashley will go through those. If you want to talk about anything happening in the world of movies, do it. You want some behind the scenes stuff, do it. She will be going through it and she will be asking them in just a bit. But now it's time for mailbag. Ashley, what were they? asking in mailbag. Nelson Valora writes, hey guys, after Dennis praised Sam Rockwell so much on several occasions in this pa in the past couple weeks, I went to his IMDb page to see what he was doing in the near future, and I found out he's working on the third Martin McDonough directed film, director of my two favorite all-time dark comedies in Bruges and Seven Psychopaths, yeah. named Three Billboard Outside Ebbing, Missouri. So my question is, what director do you guys think will rise from the independent underground filmmaking world to the mainstream audience in the next two to five years. My pick is, as my slightly big introduction indicates, <laughs> Martin McDonough. She is from Portugal. Schnepp, how about you? Uh, let's start with, I have a little list. Yeah. Um, the guy who directed Blue Ruin and Green Room, it's uh, Jeremy uh, Saulnier. I think he's a great director. So far I've seen Blue Ruin, but I'm excited to see Green Room because I've heard so much about it. Um, Ex Machina's director, Alex Garland. Oh, yeah. He's been known mainly as a writer, a screenwriter, and a very accomplished screenwriter. But his first, uh, his first big film, Ex Machina, was really knocked it out of the park. And I, re I can't wait to see what he's going to direct next. And finally, I have Diary of a Teenage Girl's director, mm -hmm. Marielle Heller, which uh, that movie came out last year. An incredible uh, first film out of the gate for her. Really uh, exciting way of directing, and, and her style just came through in that film. So I cannot wait to see what she directs next. 
Um, for me, I, Alex Carlin was definitely on my list too. But Derek Sanfrance, who um, is he's doing the new the one that's coming out with Fastbender, oh, Assassin's Creed. No, 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 no. Uh, he he's he's done. Oh, shoot, all the three movies. Oh, are you talking about Slow West, that director? Nope. No? He is, Derek Sanfrance has did Place Beyond the Pines. Um, oh my God. Yes, yeah, and he guy. and he's also I just I'm blanking on the actual movie Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams, and then he's got the one with Blue Fastbender. Valentine, Blue Valentine, Blue Valentine yeah. and then he's got the new one with uh, Fastbender and uh, Alicia Vikander. That looks coming. incredible. I, again, good call. Uh, Derek C. France, who I who I think is a really talented filmmaker, and I want to see him do a lot more. And I'd like to see what his kind of bigger movies look like. I don't know. If that's necessarily something that he's. Place Beyond in. the Pines blew me I away. Love what Beyond an incredible! If you haven't seen that film, it's yeah. a three-hour amazing film. Which is I don't I won't even say anything about it. It just goes in directions you would not yeah. expect. I'll yeah. say one thing about it that it really sells you on Ben Mendelsohn as an actor. Oh, like his sure scenes totally. in that Ooh. are just so so. <laughs> he's an good. incredible actor. That's right. I'm going with Maggie Carey because I want to see somebody who can make comedy and really because I feel like when she makes a movie, she really cares about the source material and the time period it takes place in. She clearly was a child of the late 80s, early 90s. She did a movie called The To Do List, which I enjoyed, right. and I think that there's a lot of potential with her storytelling ability and it doesn't hurt to have Bill Hader in a lot of your movies so mm. I would go with Maggie Carey all right, right Ashley what's next James Kang writes hi guys love your show I think it's the best movie news show on the planet yes right. just a question from bombs like Fantastic Four with Josh Trank Wolverine Origins with Gavin Hood and even the recent B versus S it seems like studios have meddled a great deal with how the movie should turn out how much should we be blaming the directors for movies didn't turn out the way that they wanted or be blaming the studios for what they do for a lot of movies. For me, I still feel like directors like Josh Trank should be given a second chance, but seems like they are in movie jail for the time being when I feel like so much of their own visions were jacked around by the studios. What do you guys think? Thanks. It, it's a case by case. It really is. You know, you brought up Gavin Hood and true. He directed X-Men Wolverine Origins, which was a very uneven and quite bad film. But and then I thought, you know, Ender's Game was pretty fun. Yeah. And I just saw the most recent film he did called Eye in the Sky with Helen Marin, an all-star cast. Incredible. Al Alan Rickman's filmmaker. last yeah. film. He's a great filmmaker. Satsi was the first one. You ever seen that? Yes, I did. Yeah. And that's an incredible film, too. I'm just saying, like, he's out of, uh, you know, director's jail or whatever you call it. And he's doing films that really mean something to him. Eye in the Sky was fantastic. Yeah. But Josh Trank, I think he's going to have to get out of... Uh, you know, director's jail by doing a another kind of independent film that the stakes are are a lot lower and he could just really freely direct on his own and not have any kind of encumbrances. That was and the then, thing. Yeah. Is that Gavin Hood it was a, I think a little easier for him to get out of that jail because he did there's two things. Like there was a lot of behind the scenes kind of stuff that you heard about Josh Trank, personal stuff and stuff right. but that's the house and all these other things mm -hmm. and the he made he made uh, bad relationships with a lot of the studio people too. That will hurt you. Where Gavin Hood made the movie, didn't do well. From all reports, got bullied mm -hmm. from yep. from the studio, but just kind of took it on the chin and kept on walking, and, and that's what happened. So I think that with Josh Trank, is also a young dude, can pick himself back up. We'll see. Time will tell as far as Trank goes. There are other times when it is the directors. I mean, I know a particular time in what movie I was working on back Warner Brothers where it was. The, the studio had the particular notes and the director kept making these, I have to do it this way. I have to do it this way. And, and I, to, the, to the execs credits, they were like, well, we think maybe it should go in this direction. He's like, no, I'm doing it this way. And all those decisions were the ones that fans had the most problems with. Really? And that really were the, it, a director can absolutely make the wrong choices and can be, it depends on who it is too. The younger filmmakers are gonna get bullied sometimes and sometimes but this particular guy wasn't a particularly well-known director but he was a guy that came in was very strong on his opinions and his opinions were the wrong ones for that particular film so it's case by case it just it depends they certainly do get bullied sometimes but they certainly can make the wrong decisions themselves yeah i mean it always we always want to root for the director over the studio be like oh the studio ruined this perfect piece of art you were going to make but i mean the bottom line is like when you sign on to be the director that some of that stuff comes with the territory like yeah. You're the one that wanted to direct this movie, mm -hmm. so you have to take everything that comes with that. But I think that most people are smart enough and aware enough, especially that work in the movie industry, to understand something like, oh, I'm going to hire this guy. I know he made this bad movie. I know he made Wolverine Origins, but I've seen enough of a body of work. Or I just really liked the presentation for this movie. So there's always a rebound opportunity, so you have it both ways. You can blame a director because they did sign on to put their name on there, but you can also give them a second chance, which everybody deserves. Yeah, I mean, look. Look, you look at something like Trank, uh, because the problem is that 
you do get yourself in these positions that if you don't play ball the right way, you can get like look. He was supposed to direct a Boba Fett movie. Right. That was that was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be Boba Fett, and that whole movie's not happening. Right. Now. And that whole so you, it's it just depends on how the situation goes because had he maybe played ball a little bit more, not saying that he should have done everything they wanted him to do, but maybe not had those personal things happen or whatever it was behind. So he might be doing something completely different right now and getting his his way out of that jail. All right, now it is time for live Twitter questions. Ashley Mova, what have they been saying? Sassy Milkshake writes, does my milkshake bring all the boys to the yard? No, I'm totally kidding. Oh. Writes, does the studio know does a studio know when others will release trailers? I drink your milkshake. Sorry. I drink it up. <laughs> drink the milkshake. All of it. I'll drink it. Uh, what do you think? Uh, about milkshakes, I love yeah, them. You like them with milkshakes chocolate, vanilla. Milkshake. My favorite uh, is vanilla chocolate. Kind of. A I would just go with the frosty. Does that count as a milkshake? Or it's not really. No, it's not the same. It's not the same. You need to have a spoon. No, I don't. I just want a milkshake. Like I don't want to chew on crap. No, you know, yeah. I want to just like suck on the milkshake. Right. And right. Then if I want to eat something solid, I'll do so, so after the but fact. But peanut butter or anything in there. Peanut butter is not a solid food, dear. Right. But and that's, a, and that's a swirly. That's not a if milkshake. If it's frozen and it chunks a If you have if things in it. If anything's frozen, it's going to be solid. Yeah. And you get, if you, you need a spoon, no it's not a milkshake. Argument, sir. All right, what's next? No, I'm just kidding. Wait, All right. guys, <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> yeah, like, wait, we'll answer your question. But if you need a spoon, is what I, <laughs> these guys start talking and then they just don't hear anything else. Spoon, guys. That is a difference. Spoon, mil- guys. Yeah. Guy brings a jar of peanut butter to work this week, and he thinks it's an expert on peanut butter. I just had a frosty in my hand. I don't think studios know all the time when trailers are coming out. They don't. I think sometimes they get surprised. If so, why do they release on the same day? I don't know. You know, it's strategy-wise. I think that sometimes they might know when there's like hype and buildup to it. They're like, "Oh, just got reports that Disney's dropping." Blah blah blah. Should we wait to drop this, or should we go a little later? Because they probably find out like a lot of us do or they probably also have contacts inside say hey listen we're going to be dropping this they probably help each other out sometimes right. too we're going to be dropping the civil war trailer this day if you want to put yours in if it's going to help you maybe you should put it the next day or, or wait a week they probably help each other out they have that kind of relationship or like everyone's sitting around the corner going don't let them in right <laughs> but do you also think that maybe because now we get wind of trailers dropping like you'll have like a trailer for the trailer like a right. five second clip or you'll hear some press release where oh this trailer is dropping next tuesday so do you think part of that is just to let everybody else out there in the world know hey don't drop your trailer here because we got a big one coming well, it, it's got to be a big one. Like I remember when they did the Prometheus one, the the trailer to the trailer to the trailer it was like oh, the first ten stuff. seconds. Was like yeah. it's pretty annoying. I, I don't that, mind that stuff. When Star Wars released an Instagram of Boyega different. lighting up the lightsaber, that was it's like, different. oh, that's awesome. I know, but, but it, it was different. literally it was coming out like in three days. So it's like when they do it like a two weeks in advance, it's just. Too I don't much, like the I day. Think. I don't like the day before when they do like the coming tomorrow. <laughs> Ghostbusters. It's like That's who, right. who cares? Well, it's excited, but you're right. Ghostbusters did do that like three yeah. weeks before the first trailer. Yeah, it's too much. But yeah. Born when when Born just you just saw like a picture of Matt Damon like punching a dude. That was and great. And then it's like, oh, then we get it tomorrow. Yeah. I, I like that. I you like that too. Me. They did tease that with the Rogue. They did that with Rogue One too. They just showed like three seconds of like you know the weird black store the death trooper and then some robot running is like coming tomorrow yeah, Rogue One. You're and, like, then, oh, and then star yeah. wars on like espn all weekend they did like 10 second clips and it's like oh my god we're gonna get a trailer soon yeah. i love tease the hell out of me right? all right <laughs> ashley what's next oh milkshake all right xander tanigawa writes would you guys be okay if they reboot psycho and change the gender from mother and son to father and daughter no that no. Works? It's insanity oh my gosh, no i love that i, I like i like the idea I of doing something that. i like the idea of doing something like that but not psycho you can do you can do the same just change it up a bit and do like a different story you don't have to remake all what if you just you do- did psycho but like a shot for shot remake <laughs> and just like, cast it all yeah. like bit, instead of black and white yeah make it in color okay Okay. Great idea. I'm with you. Continue. And, uh, put Vince Vaughn in it? Yeah, maybe. Oh okay. my gosh. Vince Vaughn, yeah. We, we need a dame. We need a blonde dame. Mm. Spoon mm. man. Maybe no, we're not casting uh, What Spoon about the again. girl who used to date um, Ellen? What's her name? What's the hell? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Portia something? And it's Anne Hayes. Anne Hayes. Um, oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't hate that horror concept, though. No, I don't like it. a father being really creepy and downloading all his weird stuff into his daughter's head. The daughter she keeps the dead body. Concept, but not remake. But even her work, it just her working at a hotel or a motel, a creepy motel. You know what? Like, now I actually don't hate it. Yeah, See, I don't like it's not that, a bad idea. I don't like, I, like I don't need to do a remake don't of it. Don't call it it's psycho. Like, yeah, no, don't, don't call it psycho. That's what I mean, don't call don't it psycho. Call it. There's something like it's like a modern take, like now, today, and it's you know, and you have this 
th- you can put it together and go, oh, this is kind of like Psycho. Yeah. Fine. That's cool. I call but, it Insano. <laughs> but don't call it Psycho and don't, and we don't need Norman, Normana Bates. Normana I mean, yeah. Bates. Normana. Normana. And call her Normana Bates. Yeah. This week, our brand new Insano yeah. movie you drops. Just, no, Normana you just know Bates. introducing her. You're like, what's your name? Normana. <laughs> Dad, you couldn't have gone Norma? You yeah. had to throw the extra. Yeah. 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 I want the Normana. She dressed, yeah, she dresses up like a dude. She's got a, time, right? yeah. a dead father yeah. as a hand puppet. Look at yeah. here's my father. She walks around. Would you like a solid? Like peanut butter? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Normana. Will you swipe left? I only serve Frosties with a spoon. Mm-hmm. You can't drink my milkshake. All right, Normana, what's next? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Rob Cartel writes. I watched Salt last night, which made me wonder who from the crew would you brainwash and why? Ooh, Ooh. good question. <sighs> who from the crew? So this is everybody at the Collider Studio. We can we can brainwash them, yeah. uh-huh. but why would we brainwash them? <clears throat> mm. I know a lot uh, of people that would want to brainwash Mark Riley so they could get the belt and mm. the hair. I'd brainwash Campia and just start talking how much I loved Arrow. <laughs> <laughs> Make him love yeah, Arrow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I'd brainwash Dennis, and all of a sudden we all have like double the raise. We'd be like, "How do we all get raises?" <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. like oh, that. That's really that's a good idea. I like I th- I'm thinking I would brainwash. Uh, oh, this one over here. I want to. I want to brainwash Ashley. Why? And creepy. then I want to tell a dirty joke and see if she laughs. Uh-huh. Like I want to see if her love of naughty humor was a learned response or was just like a behavior that she. Oh, had it's since nature, birth. baby. It's oh, nature. It's, I think it's all natural. <laughs> all right. <Ooh>, natural. <laughs> let's let's do two more, and then I want to hear from Wendy about what everyone's talking. Talking about from the Twitter questions. Stephen Furcher writes, please help settle a debate. Even though the MCU movies contain humor, would you say they fall under the comedy genre? Uh, damn. No. We, finally, something <laughs> we, we can agree on. <laughs> yeah. no, the way that this whole thing came up before is that Mark and I were talking about Beverly Hills Cop. And Mark's mm-hmm. like, well, that could be considered a comedy. And Absolutely. I, and right. I said, it's an action comedy. And I agreed with that as well. But right. it is not just a straight up comedy because for me, Axel Foley is a character who, although is very funny throughout the movie, he's in almost like an action drama almost. There's a lot of things that happen inside of that movie, pretty, pretty serious stuff with his his friend dying and the, the cocaine ring and everything that he's got to go through. It's There's some serious stuff and Martin Brest directing it. So with the action him being funny, I think it was action comedy. I don't think it could just be a standalone comedy as where you disagree. No, I'm no, I'm saying it's an action comedy, but you can consider it a comedy right. and an action movie. And I think you but consider it a comedy before an action movie. So when we're talking about the great comedies of the 80s, you should be able to mention Beverly Hills Cop. Right. And I, if you're talking about awesome action movies in the 80s, you should be able to mention Beverly yes, Hills I wouldn't, Cop. I wouldn't put it in the comedy character. I, I would put like Vacation in there and Caddyshack, but that, that wouldn't fit See, in there. I, but would, this is a I would put Beverly Hills Cop in the comedy genre before, Before I put action. it in, in the action, absolutely, action. See? Yeah. absolutely. See, I wouldn't. All right, so let's let's but let's get into the, the question at hand here. Milkshakes. That's, that's Marvel. <laughs> See, Marvel though, is, Frosty. I think is its own superhero <laughs> genre at this point, and there's no. I, even though there's comedic elements, it would not be a comedy. Like, Definitely. I, it's an action film. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a, yeah. It's it's. I mean, they are very very funny movies sometimes. Like the closest one to a comedy, I would say, would be Ant Man. Right, um, but yeah. Ant Man is not. I, I don't even consider Ant Man an action comedy. Like I, I consider that an, an action movie before anything else. Although there's an action a lot. film, I, I with, an action film with comedic elements. I hope somebody is kidding. Someone's like, really? Spoilers for Beverly Hills Cop? Well, it was 1984. Wait, guy. Eddie Murphy dies in it, yet he's in the sequel. <laughs> yeah, it's what weird. What's the spoiler you gave away? Yeah, what His spoiler friend was friend died in the beginning of the movie. It's kind of the catalyst. Yeah. Oh, way happened. to go, Christian. Super- oh, spoiler: There's a banana in, in the tailpipe. Oh, what? Yeah, I mean, that's hey, a, but that's that part's not funny. I mean, there's, a, there's, a bana- there's a banana in the tailpipe. Um, last question. Okay, Lauren writes: Who do you think would make a great on-screen <laughs> couple that have not been paired up yet? Mm. Well, I brainwashed Ashley, so we'll see what she wants to do. Benedict Cumberbatch um, and Michael Fassbender as the odd couple. Nice. All right. Yeah, that's Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, that's that's not bad it. at all, yeah. Okay, I so was going to say Vikander and Fassbender, but they're doing stuff. Mm. Yo, that movie looks really good, too. I almost yeah. cried in the trailer. So I told yeah. yeah, I'm going to go. I'll go with like the classic. Really. I'm going to go like, uh, hmm. Okay, so I'm going to take, uh, take a great leading man, all-time great leading man, Richard Gere. Right? Yeah, right. And I'm going to put him... With Rene Russo. There you go. Old Boom. school. I like that. that will, Mic but, drop. Haven't they done that? Though? No, no, it was Susan Sarandon. You're right. I would put Julia Roberts and me. 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think you did that. Wendy, what, uh, what are they saying about some of these Twitter questions? Well, let's go all the way back to whether or not studios know when each other are dropping trailers, uh, but instead the chat was kind of talking about Milkshake and Spoons. <laughs> One person did say, oh, yes, Spoon <laughs> Man. Come on, Mike, just come on. Spoon Man. All right. Elias C. Johnson says, I think studios do pay attention to trailers coming out. Perfect example. First Civil War trailer was released, then BVS had a spoiler trailer released a couple of weeks later. Mm -hmm. For the remake of Psycho, some are saying it's not a bad idea, but just change the name. Others right. are saying just... Leave it alone. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that's pretty much kind of collectively what we were saying. So yeah. thank you guys, as always, for chiming in. Thank you, Wendy, for letting you be the, you're the voice of the people here. So thank you for letting us know what they're saying out there. And I would like to thank you guys for joining us today on Collider Movie Talk. A couple things going down, especially on Friday. We have Dan Merle, the reigning movie fights champion who is going up against Scott Mance. That's right, I'm doing against Dan Merle! <laughs> Here they are playing, and the winner of that will play Mark Riley for the title that happens on Friday. Going to be a lot of fun, so check that out. I'd like to thank the panel here today. First, Mr. John Schnepp, where can they find you? Well, you can find me working on Insano. It's a brand new Psycho remake starring Normana Bates. <laughs> I'm doing a casting call <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, just at John Schnepp. Bye. <laughs> Next to me, he's part of the new action comedy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I almost man. forgot. Oh, hey, man. guys. Yeah, you had it. Are you going to try yeah, to do it again? Almost forgot, no, guys. No. Hey, you can check out the comic. Uh, the Comics <laughs> Trip is what it's called. It's on It's on a Comic-Con HQ. It's on today, and I go to Meltdown Comics. Check it out. Uh, subscribe to Comic-Con HQ. Bye. This Ooh. guy. <laughs> That's right. You can find my unique brand of action, comedy, suspense, and drama on stage tonight at the Hollywood Improv and this weekend at the Comedy Store and very soon at actually uh, Meltdown Comics. Nice. Mark Ellis Live. And the very lovely Normana Mova, where can they find you? <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and on Instagram, Anna G. Mova. Happy Wednesday, guys. Very nice, very nice. Um, and for me, you can find me, Christian Harloff, at Twitter and Instagram this Thursday on Collider Jedi Council. Maud Garrett makes her triumphant return to the council, so make sure you come and check that out on Thursday. And we will see you tomorrow. Frozen peanut butter. Spoon man. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.